Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the math problems from, from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you difficulty and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from day number 251 through, two, through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain almost exactly the same problem and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be a little lengthier, they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a very important part of the exam, they are a big chunk of the exam, they have not gone away. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us with enough practice problems on quantitative comparison questions. For that reason, from day number 401, we began the new series where we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the General GRE. Right now, we are on page number 362. Please turn to it. Page number 362, problem number 14 is what we are about to do, the penultimate problem on the page. Here is how the problem goes. We are told that a 20 foot ladder, a 20 foot ladder we are told, leaning against a vertical wall with the base of the ladder, with the base of the ladder. 10 foot from the wall is pulled is pulled 2 feet farther out from the wall causing causing the top of the ladder causing the top of the ladder to drop x feet causing top of the ladder to drop x feet and then they go on to give us a picture here's our wall at 90 degrees this is the wall here's our ladder here and we are told that this ladder is 20 feet 20 feet tall 20 feet long rather this ladder is 20 feet long and this is not a solid line I'm I have to give you I have to give you the picture exactly the way it appears in the exam and then the ladder is pulled 2 feet from the 2 feet further out so this distance from here to here is 2 feet and we know that this distance from here to here we are told or rather this distance from here to here is 10 feet we are told did I leave out anything I just want to make sure that I did not leave out anything that's it this is what it, this is all that is given to us and as a result it drops x feet as a result it drops x feet one more time i'm going to read it to you very quickly we have a 20 foot la 20 foot long ladder leaning against the vertical wall as we can see here 20 foot long ladder leaning against the vertical wall with the base of the ladder 10 foot from the wall the base of the ladder right here is 10 foot from the wall this distance right here is 10 feet and it's pulled 2 feet farther out it's pulled 2 feet farther out it was here the base of the ladder was here it is pulled two feet further out and as a result the top of the ladder drops x feet top of the ladder drops x feet the question is very simple very straightforward we are being asked to compare in column A column B we are being asked to compare x versus 2 x versus 2 I am going to be quiet now I am going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video solve the problem yourself and then, do, then compare your work 
against the work that you and I will do together. Do you understand? This problem, when it appeared in the exam, only 27% of the people got it right. Almost three quarters of the people had trouble with it. Let's see what you can do. Okay, here we go. First thing first. The first thing we need to take care of, the first thing we need to take care of is the fact that here we'll be dealing with two triangles and two triangles have no names. It will be much easier, it will make our life easier if we can give this triangles names so that we can refer to them. Let's call this thing point O for the origin here and this, let's call this AB which is our letter as it was sitting originally and then we put the letter out. Let's call that new, new one PQ. Now understand Understand the distance P to Q has to be the same as the distance A to B. It has to be the same distance because it's the same ladder. It's the same ladder leaning against the wall. It's just that we pull the two feet out further out from the wall. Let's first take a look at let's first take a look at this this new triangle that we have here O P O P Q O P Q and let's find out this distance here. This is what they're calling X. Let's call this one Y and let's see what that Y is. We need the room, we need a lot of room, so I'm going to have to raise all of this thing. Uh, but before I raise it, I'm going to read it one more time, just in the event that you still have trouble reading my handwriting. A 20 foot ladder leaning against the vertical wall with the base of the ladder 10 foot from the wall is, is pulled 2 feet further out from the wall, causing the top of the ladder to drop X feet. So the new triangle that we get is the triangle O, P, Q, and that looks like this, O, O, P, Q. This distance is 10 plus 2, which is 12, this is 20, the question is how much is this distance, which is what we're calling Y. Let's find out, shall we? So, 20 squared, 20 squared is going to be 12 squared plus Y squared, Y squared is going to be 400 minus 144, 400 minus 144, that's going to be 6, 9 minus 4 is 5, and 3 minus 1 is 2, it is 256, y squared is 256, and therefore y is 16, y is 16. Now I hope that, uh, I hope that there are some of you there, out there, who were able to see right away, that all of this that work that we did here was completely unnecessary. This, I hope you are able, I hope that you are able to see, that it is actually a 3, 4, 5 triangle. We didn't have to do all of this work to figure out what that side is. This is 12 and that's 20. If that's 20, the hypotenuse is 20. 20 is same as 5 times 4. 5 times 4. This is 12, which is 3 times 4. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 3, 4, 5. It's a 3, 4, 5, to 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. This is 3 times 4, this is 5 times 4, this has to be 4 times 4, which is exactly what we found here. But anyway, so the y is 16, we are done with that part. y is 16, now look at the, let's, look, let's look at the other triangle. We are done with that part. 3, 4, 5 triangles appear in the exam all the time, except they do not appear, a 3, 4, 5 triangle is not just going to appear as a 3, 4, 5 triangle. They are not going to say the one side is 3, the other side, hypotenuse is 4, can you tell us what's the third side? Of course not. They appear incognito. 3, 4, 5 triangles appear incognito like this guy here. They appear incognito. They appear in disguise. When did we learn the word incognito in our vocabulary lesson, I wonder? When did we learn the word incognito? I know we covered it. Incognito means in disguise. They do not appear as a plain old 3, 4, 5 triangle. Just give me one second. I'm almost 100% sure that we learned it. Day number 42. Day 42. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, if you're interested in getting a decent score in the verbal part, having a decent vocabulary is a must. Just type in, just type in vocabulary, just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day 42, and you will learn the word incognito. GRE vocabulary words, day 11, where we learned the word penultimate. GRE vocabulary words, day 12, where we learned the word demarcation. Work on the vocabulary, it's very important. Anyway, so that was that was 16. We are done with it. We're going to move on. We're going to now move on to triangle AOB. Let's look at the triangle AOB here. A, AOB. This is still 20. This is 10. This we just found out is Y. We just did that, didn't we? 
no, A or B, which is going to be Y plus X, Y plus X, this is, this is X plus Y, but we, we just found out that Y was 16, right here, Y is 16, so it is X plus 16. And now we can work on the X part. But I'm not going to do it that way, watch what happens, listen, listen to me what happens, okay, just listen to me. We're not going to actually waste our time solving for X, we're not going to waste, waste, waste our time solving for X, because these questions are not called, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking into another sermon, I know that. These questions are not called quantitative computation. They are not called quantitative computation, which is why, which is why we make a point of writing the word computation and we cross it out just for emphasis to remind ourselves that this is not about computation. Nobody is asking you. Here, here the question is not what is the value of x. That is not the question. The question here is not what's the value of x. The question simply is, is x less than 2, more than 2, or equal to 2? As long as we can compare x versus 2, that's all that it matters. We don't really care what exactly x is. As long as you are able to tell me that this is more than 2 or less than 2 or it is equal to 2, that's it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to pretend, we're going to put in a, a 2 for the value of x and see what happens. We're going to put in 2 here and see what happens. Okay, let's find out. Watch what happens. If we were going to pretend that this is 2, we end up with 20 squared equals 10 squared plus plus 18 squared. Watch what happens. Okay, just keep listening. 18 squared. 20 squared minus 10 squared is 300 equals 18 squared. Does 300 equal 18 squared? No, no. I hope you, I hope that you know some of the basic things in life, some of the basic things you have to know for the exam. And one of the basic things that you know, I'm going to put it here. There are many, many simple nuggets that you have to have at your disposal uh, the, uh, in, your, in your arsenal. One of the things is that you have to know your squares of the square root of 2, the square root of 3, and the square root of 5. You have to know these quantities by heart. It comes in very handy. The square root of 3, for those of you who know it, is approximately 1.7. It's approximately 1.7. It is approximately 1.7. Now, in the, event, in the event that you're wondering why I'm making a big freaking fuss about it, well, there is a reason for it as to how to learn these square roots. I don't expect you to just sit there and memorize them. That's not what I'm asking you. I don't want you to be parrot. If you want to understand the square root value of square root of 2, 3, and 5 without having to actually memorize the whole bloody, bloody thing, I would like you to watch a video. I would like you to watch this video. Just type in, just type in T's. Don't worry about what it is. Okay, it doesn't matter what that is. Teas, as in the tea that you drink, plural of tea with an S, T E A S, teas. Like I said, don't worry about it, what it is. Just type in teas, day three, and watch that video. Just type in that uh, tag and search for it. You will see a video there. Obviously, you will see a video you will recognize right away because you will see my picture there. Watch that video and learn how we did, how we approximated the square root of 2, 3, and 5. The square root of 3 is approximately 1.7. Now how does that help us here? The way it helps us here is that if square root of 3 is approximately 1.7, that tells us that square root of 3, the square root of 300 is approximately, one, uh, approximately 17. 300, 18 squared, 18 squared, 18 squared is more than 300. 18 squared is more than 300. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that this, this part here, this part 18 was simply, this is 16 plus 2, wasn't it? 16 plus 2, but this is more, this is, this is more. 18 plus 2, this, is, this quantity is more than 300. That tells us that this quantity here cannot be 2, this has to be less than 2, this has to be less than 2, this has to be less than 2, it has to be 16 plus x, and x has to be something less than 2. x cannot be 2, x definitely cannot be more than 2. If x were 2, this is the logic. If x were 2, we would end up with 16 plus 2, which is 18, and 18 squared is not equal to 300. 18 squared is far more than 300, because 17 squared is 289. 17 squared is 289. 18 squared is way more than 3. x is less than 2. That's it. I'm not going to actually do it out. x is less than 2, and since we're comparing, since we were comparing x versus x versus 2, x we just found out is less than 2, therefore x, x is less than 2, the answer is B. I'm just going to move on to the next question, okay? Question number 15. If you want to, you could actually sit there and waste your time, figure out the exact value of x, but it is utterly unnecessary here. Number 15. 
Question number 15, the very last problem in the series of the question. The last problem that we just finished, question number 14 that we just finished, we know that it had, the percentile was 27%, 27% of the people got it right. This one, the percentile was only 22. Only about a fifth of the people got it right. Almost four-fifths of the people who took the exam got it wrong. Here's the question. We're being asked to compare 99 raised to 9 over 9 raised to 99 versus 11 raised to 9 versus over 9 raised to 90. One more time, I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to get out of your way. At that point, I want you to pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds' time, as always. 9 raised to 99, 99 rather, 99, 99 raised to, 99 raised to 9, over 9, over 9 raised to 99, versus 11 raised to 9, over 9 raised to 90. That's it, I'm going to be quiet now. Oh, here we go. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do here. Well, the start here that we see here, 99 raised to 9, that can be written as 9 times 11. 9 times 11 is 99. 9 times 11 raised to 9, which in turn can be written as 9 times 9, 9 raised to 9, times 11 raised to 9. Are you with me? Okay. And at the bottom we have 9 raised to 99. 9 raised to 99. And here we have 11 raised to 9 over 9 raised to 90. Are you with me? Okay. I'm going to erase this middle step here so that it doesn't cause any confusion. There you go. That middle step is gone. All we have done is we have written 99. We have written 99 as 9 times 11. Here we see 11 raised to 9, and here we see 11 raised to 9. 11 raised to 9 appears in both columns. Why do we divide both columns by 11 raised to 9? If we divide both columns by 11 raised to 9, it disappears. It disappears. That's it. Now we are left with, now we are left with this quantity right here. 9 over 99 over 9 raised to 9 over 9, 9 raised to 9 over 9 raised to 99 versus 1 over 9 raised to 90. Okay, at this point we're going to do something here. At that point, I'm just going to do it, finish up the problem, and then I'll, I'm, going to, I'm going to go into detail as what we're doing, because if I start doing, explaining the other part here, it, it will break the uh, tempo. That's it, we're done. Just cross multiply. Just cross multiply. 9 raised to 99 times 1 is just 9 raised to 99. And 9 raised to 9 times 9 raised to 90 is 9 raised to 99 as well. This is also 9 raised to 99. The answer is C. The answer is C. And I'm going to explain to you in a second as to what we did here, this cross multiplication business. I'm going to explain to you in a second. Here's what's going on. Okay, watch what happens. This, this part here, this cross multiplication part that we're doing here, let me explain to you exactly what is going on here behind the scenes. Let's do it on the side here. I should not have taken up this much room. Watch what happens. 12 over 2 versus 18 over 3. Would you agree that 12 over 2 which is 6 and 18 over 3 which is 6, would you agree that this quantity equals that quantity? Of course you do. Why wouldn't you? Now watch what happens. Watch what happens. What's going on? We're going to compare this thing with that thing as to what we did here, the cross multiplication business. What's going on here is that we want to get rid of this 2 from the bottom. How do we get rid of the 2 from the bottom? We multiply this column by 2 and we multiply that column by 2. The 2 goes away. We also want to get rid of the 3 from the bottom here. How do we get rid of this 3 from the bottom? We multiply this column by 3 and we multiply this column by 3. And when we do that, this 3 goes away. And what do we end up with? We end up with 12 times 3 versus 18 times 2. One more time, you see? The originally it was, originally, originally what we were, what we were given was 12 over 2 versus 18 over 3. 
And what we find is that instead of showing all the steps here, this is what's going on behind the curtain. What we see on the stage, this is what's going on behind the curtain, the theory behind it. What goes on in front of the curtain on the stage is this, this is what we see. 12 times 3, right here, 12 times 3 versus 2 times 18, 2 times 18, right here, 2 times 18. And this is the direct way of doing it it's without doing the intermediate step, which is what we are doing here. That's all it is. If you like, we can do one more. If you like, if, if you like, we can do one more. Let's do it here. Let's, we're done with all of this thing. Let's do one. Let's do one more problem. And watch what happens. This is how we compare fractions. For example, can you tell me which fraction is bigger? Three over seven versus four over nine. If you had to, if you had to tell which fraction is bigger, can you can you tell like that in a fraction of a second which fraction is bigger? It's very simple. 3 times 9, 3 times 9 is 27, and 7 times 4 is 28. Since 28 is more than 27, this fraction is bigger. 4 over 9 is bigger than 3 over 7. Now, what is going on, what is going on behind the, behind the, behind the curtain is exactly what we did before. What is going on is this. 4 over 9, we multiply both sides by 9, 9 drops out. We multiply both sides by 7, and 7 drops out. And we end up with 9 times 3, which is 27, 4 times 7, which is 28. 28 is bigger than 27, therefore the second column is bigger. Therefore, the second column is bigger. Now, in the event, in the event that you want to do a few more problems like this, comparing the fraction that is, I'm going to give you a couple of videos that you can watch. We, we have to erase this thing, I need the room. This is something that you should have watched already because I, when we get to when we get to 465, I take it for granted that you've been watching this video in its proper sequence, beginning with 401. You should have watched all the videos in the proper sequence. That's how you build your skill from 401. And if you did that, then you have already watched these these videos here. Day 431, day 431. Problem number, problem number one and three, and they, four hundred twenty-two. Problem number six. This is on page number four thirty-one. Appeared on page number two sixty-five, and this appeared on page number two hundred and forty-seven. This is too much information. I know that, but that's what you have to do. And had you learned, had you learned your fractions properly, had you learned how to compare fractions properly in a jiffy like that from these exercises, it would have come in handy right here. Because that's exactly what we did here. We're comparing this fraction versus that fraction. How do we compare fraction? By cross multiplying. And when we cross multiply, we immediately can see that 9 raised to 99 is going to be same as 9 raised to 9 times 9 raised to 90. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.